Now, these government housing projects basically were meant to help people that were down on their luck, uh, that were poor, trying to come come back up, make a, make a change in their life. And uh, this is what they're still used for today. But we're having economic problems all over the country. And Port Arthur is not... Uh, uh, um, not being spared either. There are some difficult, difficult economic times for a lot of people. And we, when we, you speak of the fence line, we're looking at the fence right here. We're right on the fence line. This used to be a tank farm where you see the big storage tanks, the fuel storage tanks. Well, they were two by two from one end of this fence to the other, right down the middle of our community and they stored oil and uh, uh, kerosene and I believe some gasoline was stored in some of them. And as you can see, it was directly across the street from the houses. And what happened? Well, finally, uh, through different regulations and laws that changed, we finally got those storage tanks moved out of here. Now that happened long before I came back to Port Arthur. Mm -hmm. I think they took the last tank out of this, this tank form uh, I want to say like 1994, 93, they finally moved the last storage tank out of this area. Now, this is the Carpenterius housing project right here. And if you look toward, down there toward the end, you can see the smokestack. And you see the kids playing in the street there. We're trying to get the Carpenterius uh, torn down and removed from this area because we believe that our kids should not have to play in the shadows of refineries and chemical plants. But this is all that they have. This is this is it. This is and home. we are trying our best to be a voice for those who have less than ourselves. And we're trying to help them with their economic situation and teach them about the social and economic uh, uh, power that they have if they stand together. But many of these folks out here are working two and three mediocre jobs just to make ends meet. So they don't have a whole lot of time to protest and this is why CETA has taken it upon itself to do everything we can to be a voice for the underserved community. And this is why we need as much help as we can get to continue to fight. Well, we're going to get the word out, Hilton. Amen. So we've started two after-school programs uh, where we got a large number of kids participating uh, after school. They get like hot meals. Uh, they get help with their homework. Also, uh, it's Christmas time now. CETA has uh, spent $2,500 on buying toys for about 80 kids, and we're going to spend another $2,000 uh, to get some more toys for kids in the area uh, so that they can have a halfway decent cr Christmas. But this institutionalized style of living has to go because in this type of structure, you really don't have a sense of ownership and you feel like you're just being encased in a, a prison. And we're hopeful that we can change those dynamics around and for low-income folks have structures that are built that are a little bit more comfortable and that are a little bit more pleasant to the eye. I'm looking at the smokestack right now. Yeah. That is the uh, Valero oil refinery over there. And this is where they want to bring tar sands. Exactly. And that's, expand that refinery. That's where they want to bring the tar sands. The end of the pipeline would be right here. That would send out five to eight times the amount of sulfur that it's currently emitting. Tar sands sludge. They're and then there's uh, Motiva straight ahead. Motiva is straight ahead. That's another refinery where they want to process. They're right next to process. each other toxic tar sands. Look at that. How many how many people can imagine having this as your backyard? <laughs> you grew up here. I grew up here. I was born and raised out here at the Carpenterius Housing Project in 1960. I was born at 1202E Carpenterius here in Port Arthur, Texas. Uh, my mom was a young mom and she fought her way to get out of these projects and by the time I was 16 she bought a house. And uh, it was tough for her. I see my mother go through a lot of different changes, like a lot of young unwed mothers will do. Mm -hmm. And But she was able to bring herself up out of poverty by working hard and um, doing what she had to do to make a better life for herself and her two, her two boys. Uh, I have a brother, Billy Kelly, who's a fifth-degree black belt in Taekwondo. 
and and he. I wouldn't him. mess with him. I met him. <laughs> he's pretty good. <laughs> I could tell. And I myself, <laughs> I'm a member of the Screen Actors Guild. I mean, and this is something I fell in love with theater when I was a kid. My brother fell in love with the martial arts when he was a kid, and my mother supported us in our endeavors. And this is what kept us out of trouble. And even today, the Kelly brothers are back here in Port Arthur doing our best to make a difference along with other people in the community. My wife, Marie, she also supports my work, and she's been helping out tremendously. That's so awesome that you both came back to your community to fight for it. Yeah, it, it, this, it, it's it wasn't very inspiring. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. It was not planned, but when I told my brother I was coming back to sort of weigh in on the pollution problem we were having here in the area, and to do something about the social and economic issues that we have when it comes to unemployment, when it comes to our kids not having recreation, it was time for somebody to take a change or, or, or take a chance on making a difference. I didn't see anything being done on our local government level, and I decided to move back, take a sabbatical from my acting career in, in, in California, and come home to do what I could to make a difference in people's lives. And, um, I'm really happy that I made that choice because it's very gratifying and um, I just don't see how it would have gotten done otherwise. It was my, my calling, I believe. And, you, and your sabbatical, you had planned it for what, two, three years? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I took a sabbatical from, <laughs> from my acting career back in 2000 and I thought I would come here to Port Arthur, Texas maybe for two or three years and weigh in on the fight, get it done and head back to California. But uh, nothing really changed uh, 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 that, what, that, uh, within those three years. So I found myself continuing to fight. And now here it is 11 years later. I'm still here. We finally cracked through a lot of these industries. We're making a difference. And I feel now like I'm just getting started. So I have to continue to be the, that guard at the gate. I can't leave the job just yet because there's yet more to be done. For this community. Now that we've gotten the industries to understand what they need to do, now we're in the process of trying to rebuild and heal this community.